Frank, first of all, your reaction to becoming the new manager of Everton Football Club? Uh, very excited. Um, it's a huge honour for me to, to represent and uh, manage a club with the tradition, the size of Everton Football Club. Um, I can't wait to get started. Um, I always had uh, a great feeling whenever I played against Everton as a player, playing at Goodison, felt the atmosphere, felt the passion of the fans. And um, yeah, very hungry to get started. So there's so many different facets of the football club that, that reached out to you, that appeal to you. Yeah, for sure. I think there are certain clubs in um, in England. As a young boy growing up, and as a player, and now as a, as a manager, but when you you go into the stadium, you can feel the the, the passion that the fans have for their club. Um, very intense. Um, I always, at times, found it difficult when that passion was was against you uh, in in a positive way, obviously for Everton. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very much looking forward to representing that on on their side. Um, and they will 100% get the the passion that they give when they watch their team. I'll try and bring that as a manager. It was a meticulous recruitment process. What did you take from the conversations that you had with the owner, the chairman and the board? Well, it was very positive and I think from my point of view to have such open conversations with, with the owner, with the board, to try and sell my, my vision for what I can bring to the club. I think you expect a meticulous process with the club, uh, the size of Everton Football Club. Um, but as I say, I'm very uh, pleased that um, they've uh, given me the role of managing the club. I will do it with all my heart, with all my passion and bring that. But yeah, the process was as it should be, and I'm very pleased to be here. Did their passion come through clearly as well? Yes, very much. Passion and ambition. You know, I think it's, uh, you can see that. I could see that from the outside looking in. But when you have those clo uh, conversations close up, it's great to feel that. I hope they felt my ambition and, and how hard I want to work to, to bring it all together as much as I can. So, yeah, really positive talks. Did the chairman and the owner give you an idea of their long-term vision for the football club? Yes, they did. Um, I think the most important thing that we, we all know that we have to focus on is the short term to get ahead of ourselves. But yes, we know uh, the new stadium that's coming. We know where this club wants to be and where we want to get to. Uh, but we know first and foremost probably the challenges that are in front of us right now in terms of league position. Uh, we have an FA Cup game next week. And so I want to get to work very quickly on that to, mm -hmm. to, to deal with the short term. And of course, in, in the back of our mind is always the long-term vision of the club. It is a big challenge, it is a big job, you know that. How important is the backing of the owner and the chairman and the board? Yeah, the, the, the backing and the, the open communication between owner and board for me is, is a big deal. That, that helps me and I'm very open with the way that I want work and that's how I want to be. And, and, I, and I think that runs deeper and further than just owner, board and myself. That runs through staff at the football club, that runs through the players, that runs through the fans first and foremost because they are the football club. So. From my point of view, I will always try and be open, I'll always try and communicate and I'll always try and hopefully show the fans um, exactly how hard I will work and we will work to, to, to bring those long-term visions. And talking to the fans, you've played at Goodison Park, you've managed at Goodison Park. How important will the passion of the supporters on a match day, how important will that be moving forward? It, it will be hugely important. I, I always felt it as a player. I felt the, 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 the passion and the support of the crowd. It could swing a game it could, you know, and, and as, a, as, a, as a team. The competitive level uh, that the Premier League brings, the position we are in the table, we certainly need that. And, and it's a two-way thing. The players have to show that. The players have to show that on the pitch. They have to show the same passion that every fan turns up to watch that game. And that would be my first job, my first message to the players. Um, but together, we have to do it. We have to do it together. These things can't be done uh, without the support both ways. So we'll try and do our job. And I know that the fans will be there backing us. As you've alluded to, the Premier League table doesn't make pleasant reading for Evertonians at the moment. What are the key steps, what are the first steps to turn that round? Well, th th this is a position we're in and, I, and, I've, and I've watched closely from the outside. And, and now I'm in, I think, the first thing as a football club when you're having tough times, and, and this happens, you know, this happens, is that you, you regain the confidence and you, and you get together. And we, we keep talking here about players and fans. That's a group thing, but in terms of what we can control with players, we have to work hard. We have to be focused, but we have to have confidence. It's a good squad. It's a good bunch of players. It's a good team. And I think when things are hard and sometimes things are tough, there's a lot of criticism that can be thrown around. I'm here to change that and try and make it a positive message for the players, believe in themselves and show that we have more than enough talent to move up the table. But it's, it's easy to speak like that. We actually have to do, obviously. Somebody once said that when you're a manager, you never stop learning. How have you evolved and changed as a manager since the day you first walked through the door at Derby County? Um, I've evolved a lot and I think that's important as a manager. Um, it's important that you have your idea and how you want to work, um, what you want your team to look like. Um, but as you work with players, as you go through experiences, it's important that you continue to learn. I've been fortunate enough to work at Derby Football Club 
worked at Chelsea, obviously, where I'd been a player mm -hmm. um, and managing in the Champions League, um, managing big name players, trying to introduce youth into the team. So I've had a lot of experiences and you, you must always try and learn from them. And I'll try and bring the things that I learned to Everton Football Club. As a player, club level and international level, you played for some of the biggest managers that have ever managed. Do you take a little bit from every manager that you've played for into your own coaching world? Yeah, I, th I think you do. And it's, it's a question I get asked a lot. And I was fortunate enough to work under so many great managers. And I think the, the important thing is that you take the good things that you learn along the way. And I've worked under some great managers. But you also remain yourself. You try and build that. And that's, that's what I try to do when I, when I finish playing and I, and I start to think about becoming a coach. was like, what, what were the good things? What can you remember? What made you feel good as a player? You know, there's a lot of management. It's not just the tactical side. It's how you make the squad and how you make individuals feel. Um, so I will try and be myself in that way. Be very personable, very close to the players mm -hmm. um, and set up a team to, to, to play good football and win games. Have you developed an idea of how you will get the best out of the squad? In terms of my idea on the squad, I have things that I've seen from the outside that will be my priorities to try and improve, uh, firstly to get results, but also to try and improve confidence, try and improve the way we plan, try and engage with the fans. I think it's a unique club, Everton, in that you can really understand what the fans want to see. And the first thing they want to see is fight and desire. Um, and that must always be our baseline. Um, but yes, I've seen things and I'll, I'll work very quickly on the things I see as priorities. On an ideal Saturday afternoon, how would you want to see a Frank Lampard managed Everton play? Well, I keep, I keep saying the words passion and, and fight, and I think it relates to Everton Football Club. It's probably how I tried to, to build my own career as a player. I knew I had to work overly hard to try and be the, the, the best that I could possibly be. And I'm the same as a manager, and I want to see that in my team. But beyond that, we don't, you, you have to have the, the qualities to, give, to play good football. So I want to see a team that are confident in possession of the ball, but can control games with the possession, but also be very exciting to watch at the top end of the pitch. I think we need to be um, a team that's very active, that's crossing and getting shots and staying in the other half of the pitch. That's what I always want. On the flip side of that, when you don't have the ball, you want to be aggressive. That's how my teams have always set up as I've been coaching, and I'll quickly work to make sure that's how Everton is. Already as a manager, you've developed a reputation for nurturing young players, developing young players, and giving them the pathway that they need. Is that an important part of the job for you? It's an important part of the job for me, yes, because I, I was that young player <laughs> a, long, a long time ago. Um, but I understand what it means to be a, a player that comes through at the club, that you, you, you're in an academy and if you can progress into the first team and what that means to the club, what that means to the fans. And I think at Everton, there is a history of, of bringing players through. There is a relation, a direct relation you see with the fans when they see a homegrown player come through. So my job as manager is not to get too nostalgic about that. Players have to, to earn that right, train with the first team, show they're worthy of doing it. Um, and if I can integrate them, that, and it does improve the team and it improves the feel of the squad and brings great balance to it, I'll certainly do that. But that, that, that's something you have to focus on. We have to have a strong link with the academy, make sure that the academy coaches, the academy players know that if they perform, then they can move into the first team building. And if you can, there will be a pathway into the first team. You can't beat a bit of know-how, though, can you, out there on the pitch? No, you can't, and that's why it's important to strike the right balance and we'll rely on all the players. This is, in terms of fresh start, myself coming in to see the players, and we need experience. We're in a position, of course, where we, we don't want to be in, as it stands now. So the balance of getting it is, is my job to, to find the right experience, work with those players, bring youth in at the right time, because that's what we want to do in the long term for the club. But, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, we want to win football matches. It's ironic, isn't it, that your first game in charge should be an FA Cup tie after you broke our hearts in the competition. Your dad broke our hearts in the competition, <laughs> so maybe Saturday's time to give a little love back. I've got a lot of making up to do on that front, <laughs> and I do, I do apologise. My dad, would, I would have grown up on hearing stories. That's about the only time my dad scored in his career and obviously broke Everton <laughs> hearts at the time, a long time ago, and, uh, and I scored one in the Cup final. Listen, I, it's, it was one of those things, where, you know, as a player, went up against Everton a lot, and I had some good days and some not-so-good days. But, um, no, I'm here to, to absolutely represent the club, and as I say, I'll, I'll try and make up for a couple of those moments.